Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. So last time we got some momentum going with our photo gallery app by creating our home screen and our art gallery screen. The art gallery screen was empty then, but then in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building this form here. You see on the page, this form also has got some validation going on. So if I hit create gallery, you see we get some validation errors because we need at least a title and a date in this format to create a gallery. So let's go and add a title. And upon adding a title, we see that the label and the line highlights as green, which shows that it's valid. And also for publish date, let's go and add a date. We get this date picker that pops up. So this is from the materialize JavaScript set of widgets. And essentially we are interoperating with this from the Dart side. So we're writing Dart code, which is invoking methods on the JavaScript side. That being said, I can select a date, I can hit OK, and then that'll populate our publish date field. We can add a description if we want. And also there is this file upload section. We can click to select a file and then click in create gallery we'll go ahead and output the details of our form. So right now we're not working with this file input yet, but we're going to be mostly focused on building these other fields and then looking at the validations around that. All right, not going to waste your time any further. Let's get into it. Let's create a model class that will be used to represent each of our galleries. I'll come to PG client and on the lib source, I'll create a new folder and we just name it models and then in there i'll create a new file and we'll call that gallery dot dot and let me just collapse this and then in here what we'll do is we'll define our gallery class each of our galleries will have a title publish date description and a thumbnail url and from those we'll define a couple of constructors i'll create the gallery constructor and then this will take in an optional positional parameter containing each of our instance members. So publish date, description, and the thumbnail URL. Then I also define another constructor, a named constructor called from JSON. So what this will do is it will take a map object and then we are going to populate our instance members based on what's in the map. So we we'll do title, publish date, description, and last but not least, our thumbnail URL. And then we'll define a method called toJSON, which will return a map. We'll essentially be doing the reverse of this method. So this will come into play when we are sending data up to the server. So we'll create toJSON. And then in here, we want to return a map containing our title, description, publish date. I'll shift that upward. And last but not least, thumbnail URL. Actually, not thumbnail URL which is because that would be generated on the server. So that's for a later stage. But for now, we'll do with these three members. Okay, so now this is done. When we come to our gallery page, pretty much empty, we are going to create a form that we'll be using that model with. So on the lib source, common, I will create a new folder and we'll call it gallery form. And then in gallery form, we are going to create a couple of files. So one of them is gallery form component dot dot. The second file will be a template called gallery form template dot HTML. And then lastly, we'll create a SCSS file to contain our styling. All right, so let's go to the Dart file. In here, we are going to import Angular. And then we also need to import Angular forms. And then I'll import the gallery model that we created and then from that we can define our component annotation our selector will be an element selector so gallery hyphen form we'll pass in our template url which we called gallery form template we'll define our style urls so that is our gallery form template dot css we'll define some directives that we're going to use so we want to import the core directives from angular the form directives from angular forms and we need to specify a class that this component is going to decorate in order for it to compile we'll call this class gallery form component 
And this class will have one instance member called gallery, at least for now. I'll save that. And then what we want to do is, in fact, we need to assign this with an empty instance of gallery. So I'll implement one of Angular's lifecycle methods called on init, which means we need to override ng on init because that comes from there. And then in here, we'll just assign an empty gallery instance to our gallery member. So I'll save this. And then next, let's go to our template and let's populate it with our form. So I'll start with a div and then I'll define a row and then I'll define a column and then I'll define a form. And then each of our fields will be wrapped in a div with a class of input field. And then we'll have an icon for title and title will have an input field. I'll just set the name and ID title. Let's give it a label and then I will duplicate that and then we'll adjust this for our publish date field. The icon I'll use is the calendar icon. The name and title will be set to publish date. Then I'll duplicate this again. Then we'll make this our description field. I'll use the mode edit icon. And for our description field, that would be a text area. So our name will be description, ID will be description, and then the label will be for the description field. And let's call this description. All right, so in order to see this in the browser, we need to actually import and use it. So I'll come to pages, gallery new component, and let's import that. And let's add it to the list of directives. And then we can adjust our template. We can do gallery hyphen form to render our gallery form. And I just noticed this is gallery form component. All right, and we actually don't need this. Okay, I'll save that. And let's see what that looks like in the browser. Okay, so we got something like that. So these two look fine. However, this description looks dodgy. I forgot to add the relevant classes, I believe. So the text area actually needs a class called materialize text area. And yeah, there we go. That's quite nice. Okay. So I want to improve the space in a bit because right now it's, I think they're a bit too close together. So I'll come to the SCSS file and then for our gallery new section, I believe that's what I called it. No, gallery form. Gallery form section for each of our input fields, we will give it a margin bottom of well, let's say three rims. And yeah, that looks better in my view. I'm going to come back to our gallery new component and then I'm going to have a title before the form. So I'll specify a div with a class of row and then give it a column and then place my heading. And let's see what that gives us. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and add our submit button to the form. So we want this one, or we want that one. And then after all of that, we'll have our button, so the type to submit, and then we'll give it a couple of classes to adopt the material style. And then we'll say create gallery. And let's see that. Okay, cool. All right. And in fact, let's add our file thumbnail. So we'll define an input file field, and then we'll define our button. This button will have the word file, and then we define a file input, we set the name, and then we'll set the accept attribute to accept only image files for now. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, looks like that. And let's finish it off. So we'll define a file path wrapper class, and then a text input with a placeholder, and upload thumbnail, such. If you follow this correctly, then it should look like that. So I can click that, and then select a file, and so on and so forth. Okay, so at this point, it will be good to add some validation to this form so that we are not submitting empty input. So for now, let's look at how we can set these to the title and the publish date to be required. So the way we add validation to a form is by using the ng form directive. And because we have imported our form directives, we already have access to it. So let's come to our form template. In fact, before we add validation, let's look at how we can capture the values of our form first. So I will add a submit handler and with Angular, it's ng 
ng submit and when that submission happens you want to invoke a method we define in a minute called update gallery so then in our gallery form component i'll define that method update gallery and then for now let's just console log our gallery in order to console log i need to import the dart html library because that means i can do you know console log gallery to json and let's mark this as void okay so in fact let's try this if i populate that and i hit create then we get our entries in here as such don't worry about all of that it's because dart map objects do not translate the same way to javascript objects we're getting our titles publish date and description at the moment it's marked as null because we are not linking the data we input here to our gallery model so which brings us to the ng model directive so that's also available under form directives and what we need to do is to mark each of our fields with the ng model keyword as such and we need to wrap it with these two to enable two-way data binding that means that when we enter data into this title because of this ng model directive it will automatically be set to a property on our gallery object and should we decide to also populate our gallery object from this side because of that ng model directive it will automatically be projected into this field so what we'll say here is our ng model will be data bound to our gallery's title as such so let's save this and to demonstrate i will set a title for our gallery call it my title and if i come to the browser and then i reload you can see my title has been set already and that means if i update this title and then i click create gallery then we see the title updated all right so let me get rid of that and now let's do this with the other fields so we need this on our publish date and we also need this in our text area so this will be bound to our description property and then let's test this again i reload that let's say that's gallery we'll give it a publish date and then we'll set a description and when i hit create and inspect that then we see our gallery model populated okay so now let's look at how we can add validation to our form so i had mentioned that validation is possible using the ng form directive so to use that we need to define what's known as a template reference variable i just call it gallery form now if you leave it like that this template reference variable will give you a reference to the dom element for this form but because we are not intending to use it as such we can assign it the ng form control what this does is is essentially a form controller which has access to all these fields and the validation state of those fields and you can also get certain information like if this whole form is valid or not but we need to do some extra stuff in order to get it to work so next we need to tell it about the fields that it needs to monitor so for each of these fields we need to define an ng control directive and here will be a key name representing that control so for instance this will be title and then secondly what we want to do is to define another template reference variable so we'll do title and then we'll also assign the ng form controller to it so so essentially we need these two in order for it to work this will be the key name for this field within the ng form controller and let's do the same for these other ones so for our publish date i'll do that and i'm not gonna do it with text area because ideally this should be optional but once we've done that we need to set our validation rules for now i'll just say this field is required i'll also mark this as required and then we can confirm this is working by passing our template reference variable into our update gallery method which means in update gallery we can we can perform a couple of checks on our form so we can say if our form is valid and it's ng form we want so if our form is valid then we can console log the results of our form else if it's not valid we can log out an error for now so let's test this out okay so if i hit create gallery 
right so we got html5 validation on this form so we need to disable that so over here we'll just add the no validate attribute let's try that again okay we've got an error message form not valid which shows that it's working if we add a title and a date then it logs out our results okay so that works next what we need to do is to highlight that the form has actually got an error and the way we can do that is we can bind to a couple of classes that materialize makes available for us so for instance if a field is invalid the invalid class can be added then if a field is valid the valid class will be added so i've just added it as such just so we can see what that looks like so like that if it's invalid it gets a red line if it's valid it gets a green line okay so what we can do is use an angulus attribute binding we can bind to our class and then we want to set the invalid class if and here we'll check that our title and we're getting this from this bit is dirty so that means it's been interacted with it's been and title is not valid and then i can do the same for here if our publish date is dirty and our publish date is invalid and let's check the browser so if i do something and it's invalid we get that and then we can test this out as well and now that's invalid so we see the red line and then what we can do is we can add the opposite for a valid check if it's dirty and it's valid and we can do the same here okay if it's valid then we see the green line then we should be able to submit it if it's not valid then we should get an error okay so at this point it will be useful to strengthen the validation on this publish date because doing that is still not valid and it's given green so using the html5 pattern attribute we can add a pattern to be checked for so we want exactly four digits followed by a hyphen and exactly two digits followed by a hyphen and then another two digits i think that should do let's test it out okay so now that's flagging and let's make that valid and there we go so if that goes then that's not valid and now that's valid so on and so forth so at least now we are guaranteed that an actual date will be entered in this field in this format all right next we should display a validation message that will at least tell the user in a friendly way that we need this field so for our title let's add a span with a class of helper text and the way materialized as it is we need to add a data error attribute and in here we'll have our error message such and then we need to define a data success attribute and for title i'll just leave success as empty and then we'll do the same with publish date upon this having an error we'll say please enter a valid date then on success i'll leave that blank as well so let's check this out okay okay there we go yep yeah. there we go and if we make it valid it disappears and also disappears okay so let me reload this what if we go ahead and we just click create gallery the form is not valid but then there is no indication that we need to validate these fields so what would be good is if we go ahead and click create gallery we should essentially flag up the validation error states so let's look at that now i'll come back to our gallery form component and in here we'll loop over each of our form controls so looping over these will give us the key and then the actual form control what we want to do is we want to mark this control as dirty and then we'll set only self to true so I'll save that if i run this and i click that straight away it flags up then as we populate it error message disappears okay so the last thing we need to do is for our publish date field 
to display the date picker whenever we click it. So let's go to materialize this documentation and we can see an example here. So we create an instance of materializes date picker functionality and when we click on birth date it shows this date picker and when we select a date you click OK then it pops up over there as such. Now because this is a JavaScript API and it's not in Dart we therefore need to use Dart's JS package. Fortunately we have the JS package already installed so let's do that now and the way we'll do this is under our common directory, our create new folder I'll call that JS interop and in there I'll create a materialize Dart file. So in here the way interop works is first need to define the JS annotation at the top of the file and we need to give this a library name I'll just call it materialize interop and let's import our JS package and then just to just to demonstrate an example of interop right now the context is our window object because we've not defined anything in here so that means we can do for instance have another JS annotation and in here I'll say console.log here we'll have an external log function which takes in a string such and then the return type will be void so I'll save this and then in gallery form component let's import that so that means we can do something like log invoked window.console.log so let me save that and, and let's see what happens okay so there we go we've invoked console.log on the javascript side so if we go to the materialized documentation we see that we've got the m object which if we inspect our console we see it's on the window object so we do, if we do window.m that gives us the same object as that so what we need to do is in m we are accessing the date picker property and then we are invoking the init method as defined here and then we pass in a collection of elements and then some options so let's see how we'll do that using the interrupt package so I get rid of that and, and I'm going to be ending this part here in the next video we are going to resume with interoperating with our date picker and we'll be adding a few extras here and there so stay tuned <music>